All right, so I hope this lighting is okay. Uh, so I thought I'd come to you guys with a really exciting video, something that I've been thinking about a lot, and I think it's underrepresented. Uh, what things you should focus on as you shift towards a whole foods plant-based diet, low in fat, uh, trying to stay away from alcohol, coffee, and especially oils. High fat is the enemy of healing your skin. That is number one, you have to take care of. But the second thing, besides staying away from fats, what you should be actively looking out for to help speed up the recovery and detoxification process is fiber. So the other day I had an assignment for statistics and it was quite interesting. What it was talking about was 10 samples of the average dietary fiber from people who volunteered for this experiment. And the averages were 6, 8, 11, 11, 17, 21, 21, 28, 18, and 115 grams per day. And what's crazy is that 90% of folks were not getting even the bare minimum FDA requirements of fiber per day, which is 30 grams, uh, which you would get from fresh fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, and nuts, seeds, avocados, things like that. So basically, only plant sources contain fiber. Animal products, pure sugar, processed foods, alcohol, coffee, and oils do not contain fiber, and I assume that creates, that makes up the majority of a Western diet, because you've got like meat, you have white bread, you have eggs, you have um, milk products, dairy products, coffee, alcohol, and where in there is the, you know, fruits, vegetables, grains, beans, nuts, seeds, avocados, and tofu? Um, it's not there. And that's why we see chronic diseases, you have irritable bowel syndrome, you have poor digestion, constipation, skin issues. It's because that waste is sitting in your gut as opposed to getting out, and this causes problems. Uh, I go to Chronometer every now and then and I plug in what I eat in a day, uh, maybe for video purposes, maybe sometimes just for myself, if I'm eating enough or if I'm eating too much, am I exercising plenty? Uh, every now and then I just plug something in and it really helps keep track of basically your activity levels and your food intake levels. And this time around, uh, I did it during the raw foods diet and let me tell you that one person in the st statistics example, the 115 grams of fiber, they have to be eating a raw foods, fruitarian, vegetable based but diet because there is no other way that you can get in that much fiber but if you're eating cooked foods slightly less because it's uh, it's a little bit more dense in calories it's a storage type food like potatoes and beans and grains nonetheless it's absolutely easy to get in a ton of fiber eating whole plant cooked foods in fact I plugged in uh, what I ate yesterday and just to show to you guys that even if you're not perfect and you eat some refined foods or you eat you know maybe something slightly processed you can still get in a ton of fiber uh, relative to how many calories you eat so for instance when I was eating raw foods I was getting in somewhere around 100 grams 110 grams of fiber and I eat about 2500 calories a day I'm active big girl it makes sense but when I'm eating cooked food, it's somewhere between 70 and 90 grams of fiber per day. Now I'm assuming if you're somebody eating between 2,000 and 2,500 calories, it's gonna be probably between 50 and 75 grams of fiber, and that's fantastic. That's almost double the FDA requirement, and the more the better, because soluble and insoluble fiber just push waste out of the body. It helps speed, out, uh, speed up waste, uh, waste emissions from the body so that you don't have things rotting in your gut it can speed up detoxification and it's just so good for your body to not have things putrefying in your gut so in in turn you have you know better digestion and longevity so it win it's a win-win situation so i put in what i ate yesterday and for breakfast i had i had plain oats with bananas uh, mangoes some maple syrup, just a drizzle on top, a little bit of walnuts, and some cinnamon. And then for lunch, I had three slices of whole wheat bread with a little chunk of baked tofu. And I had these little burger patties that I make. They're quinoa black bean burger patties that 
I combine them with some salsa and some oatmeal and spices and just make them into little nuggets. I bake them and they taste like little uh, little burger nugget patties. And I had that with an apple. So that was lunchtime. And then finally for dinner I had some black beans and tomato sauce with some white rice and dessert was some applesauce and a small handful of uh, low-fat animal crackers. And you can see that despite eating, let's say, the white rice, despite eating like tofu, which is a little higher in fat, walnuts, everything balances out and is around 10% from fat, meaning it's not a high fat diet, it's perfectly between that 10 to 20% range, which is perfect for a whole foods, low fat plant-based diet if you're trying to heal your skin. And number two, despite eating the crackers and the white rice, I still got in plenty of fiber, around 77 grams of fiber. So even when I'm so-called slacking off or I'm not doing my best, it's still far superior than eating, say, a low-carb diet, high animal product diet, or a standard Western diet, because you still get in that 30 grams uh, bare minimum the FDA requires, and then some. Every single meal you should be looking at, am I eating fruits, vegetables, grains, beans, and some nuts, seeds, and avocados? That should be your main focus, because anything else that's on your plate is basically taking away space in your stomach for something that is far better for you, far better for your skin, for your future health, and for your longevity. You know, this isn't just about healing your skin, this is also about, you know, fueling a life where you don't have poor digestion, other chronic health problems, and other diseases that are going to inhibit you from feeling your best. I hope this helps you guys. I hope it gives you an idea for what to plan for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you need help with recipes, check out Brand New Vegan's website. I'll probably include this in the beginning because you're not going to get to the end, but he has fantastic transition foods and everyday foods, quick fixes, staples. I love his site. I use a ton of his recipes. 50% of my recipes are coming from Brand New Vegan Chuck Underwood's site. Um, it's just a fantastic resource. And honestly, I only spend 10 to 20 minutes in the kitchen per meal. Less for breakfast, more for dinner. And all in all, I cook every single meal. And it's so easy, honestly. The more you get into a habit or a routine, the easier this process to heal your skin will be. And by the time that you get into that routine and you continue it for a long duration of time, you're going to notice months have passed and your skin is looking even more fantastic every single day, every single week, every single month. To the point where you're like waking up excited that, you know, things are not itchy, things are healing up, things are not red, things are not inflamed. That's the kind of feeling you should have. You shouldn't be stressed, you shouldn't be worried, and you shouldn't feel uncomfortable in your own skin. You should feel beautiful, you should feel comfortable, you should feel energetic and, and grateful to be in this beautiful skin you worked so hard to get. So that's why I tell you guys to eat this way because I know it works, other people know it works, and it doesn't take a whole lot of time. In fact, having eczema is a lot harder than curing it. So I hope this helps. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.